Earth and Mars, and it augments satellite functions. You've got a picture there of the Blue Ring. It's a 44-meter wingspan total. It's a huge vehicle. Overall, it's an exciting new class of vehicle, making space for more accessible and sorry, making space more accessible and practical for companies, governments, and our customers. Right, and it's an amazing addition to our toolkit and starts to really fill out that picture of a robust space infrastructure that will make space more accessible and more usable for all humans. Right, in particular, its potential for cost-effective science missions is just, you know, uh, unprecedented. Right. All these developments are exciting, but there's one more piece to the puzzle. That's right. Very soon we are going to the South Pole of the Moon with the 8 meter tall Blue Moon Mark 1 lander that happens to be taller than the Apollo Lunar Module. For us, this vehicle is a pathfinder as we continue to make significant progress within our Lunar Permanence team. This initiative is focused on establishing a lasting human presence on the Moon, creating foundations for humanity to settle permanently. Right. So on the left of your screen, the Blue Moon Mark 1 standing 8 meters tall, single launch, cargo capabilities. On the right are Mark 2 standing over 16 meter tall with capabilities for crew to the surface of the moon. So Tabitha, those are the pieces of the puzzle. Consider our tagline, for the benefit of Earth. This sums up our mission. Every program and every vehicle we develop aims to harness the resources of space for Earth's advantage. Our work focuses on accessing vast resources, energy, rare materials, and making it possible to relocate heavy industries, especially those that could be detrimental on Earth, like manufacturing and energy production, into space. Yeah, and these are substantial ambitions. You're probably thinking that as you're listening to us talk about everything, but that is the work at hand for us here at Blue. Historically, fewer than 700 people have traveled to space globally. However, to significantly impact Earth using space, we must expand our vision. That's right, Tabitha. We've invested in developing New Shepard and building our legacy in human spaceflight. With the success of New Glenn's first mission, we're scaling our services and creating a comprehensive ecosystem of programs. This is the approach that embodies the road to space. We're developing reusable launch systems. We've got various programs for space exploration, orbital mission, lunar ventures, and this will enable future generations to leverage space for Earth like never before. Yeah, and with New Glenn's success, we've embarked on a new chapter in realizing this vision. Now, if you take a look at your screen right now, you might notice that we are currently in a hold. So just for a moment, we're going to toss it right back over to New Shepard. So we are still currently in this hold, and in just a moment, we should be hearing from Mission Control. They're about ready to do the go, no-go pull from the launch. Um, that should be happening any moment here, Eddie. And while we're kind of in this hold and we're waiting for that exciting moment, you know, let's talk a little bit about New Shepard and um, what our astronauts can experience today on their flight. So the New Shepard vehicle, right, is going to propel these astronauts beyond the carnival line. Yeah. And they're going to get 
three minutes of clean microgroup gravity, some of the cleanest microgravity measured in, you know, G, R, M, S, root mean square. Um, and that enables them to really, you know, enjoy this experience of being in space, you know, viewing space through some of the largest windows that have ever flown in space, um, and truly uh, experiencing the overview effect. It's, it's something that so many people talk about and, and, and how the overview effect really helps influence the rest of their life and the things that they're able to do right back here on Earth. Um, New Shepard as a vehicle, you know, we talked about this briefly in our mission and vision of what we do here at Blue Origin. But um, New Shepard is essentially a, uh, a vehicle that is uh, set up to help with our new Glenn right. launches. So it's a test bed, right? So I would, you know, take away sort of three things. And we've got the anatomy there of, of New Shepard, which is really two vehicles. It's the propulsion module or booster, you'll hear me call it, and the crew capsule there on the right. But to, to your point earlier, Tabitha, this New Shepard vehicle has given us really three key advantages. Number one, we get to practice, launch, land, repeat, and human space flight. So we get to hone our skills on operational reusability. Number two, New Shepard is uh, a test bed, essentially. Right. It, uh, for example, we uh, installed some guidance navigation and control instrumentation for terrain relative navigation for our Blue Moon program on the New Shepard booster. So as the New Shepard booster was performing entry, descent, and landing, we were able to raise the technology readiness level of instrumentation that we're going to use to land on the moon very soon. Um, and then number three, it's given us the ability to practice with liquid hydrogen. Right. Um, so liquid hydrogen is important to us because we've selected a lunar architecture that leverages the fact that there's water ice on the moon. And meaning that there's water ice, you can split water into oxygen and hydrogen, and those are the same propellants that our Blue Moon system uses, right. that our new Shepard system uses, and so we've become world experts in liquid hydrogen. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, for someone who doesn't know, we have the oxygen, the hydrogen, and then the byproduct of new Shepard is water vapor. And right now, if you're wondering, um, we are still in this hold, and I just got confirmation in my ear that the holds are because of winds at this moment in time. But I still want to talk about um, New Shepard, and I think we also have a graph of the flight path that New Shepard takes. I really love this uh, graph because it gives us, you know, a full picture of what this experience is like for our astronauts. So there it is on your screen. In the little box, you can see New Shepard sitting on the pad, ready to go. We're just waiting on those winds. But yeah, right. this and is... That's right, Tabitha. So from left to right, uh, you've got those vehicles in their mated configuration, sort of using the BE-3 engine's thrust to cut through the atmosphere. You've got some control with your aft fins as well that are hydraulically actuated. You get through the atmospheric pierce point max Q, um, and then you reach about two and a half minutes later, main engine cutoff, in which case the B3 engine shuts off. Uh, about 15 seconds after that, the two vehicles, uh, well, separate and become two vehicles, right? It's at that point that you're seeing the microgravity, the very clean GRMS we were talking about. Right. Um, and then uh, you hit apogee beyond the Kármán line, right? That's very important for our astronauts. And then the pool of gravity brings both vehicles back down to Earth. The booster first, of course. Um, and it uses aerodynamic surfaces to stay stable on the way down. And then about 5,000 feet above ground, the B3 engine will relight, uh, come in for a very, very soft landing, right? And I always look at those videos and, and I'm always impressed because that's not slowed down, that's real time. Yeah. But it's a soft landing so that we can reuse the booster time and time and time again. Um, meanwhile, let's talk about what the astronauts were doing. Yeah, the astronauts have been up to a lot over the last three days. Of course, they have been getting ready for this moment. Um, but I also want to take a moment and talk about how New Shepard compares to New Glenn. You gave me this uh, incredible chart earlier, and I believe we have this graphic, and it was just the scale is incredible. There it is. That's New Shepard sure. on the left yeah, on the so, right. We have so, New you Glenn. Know, just more or less New Shepard around a 60-foot tall rocket. And, and New Glenn just under 300 feet tall, and you've got a, a standard person there for scale. Um, so um, this is the scale of, of the vertical takeoff, vertical landing architecture. Right. Uh, it's the inverted pendulum problem. Uh, if you could do it for the smaller rocket, it you know can be scaled to the larger rocket. But the larger rocket is so large, in fact, that New Shepard fits inside of the fairing of New Glenn. 
Um, so that, that's, really? that's pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could put a new shepherd inside of the fairing of New Glen. That's, that's pretty incredible. Um, so I am uh, taking a look here, and we have some footage we want to show you from earlier today. I wanted to, to show our audience this footage, and this is our astronauts preparing for the day and getting ready to launch, of course. Where we will be spending the next two days going through your complete program. Uh, that's our Laura Stiles you're hearing there, uh, preparing our astronauts over the last three days of training that they have. And for someone who doesn't know Eddie, can we kind of walk them through what those three days are like? What are the systems that they are uh, learning about and what they're kind of uh, practicing and getting ready for on launch day? Right, so we want our astronauts to have a very good understanding of the technical specifics behind New Shepard. But then we also want them to be very comfortable with the hardware they're going to use. So here we're seeing, for example, astronaut Freddy Resigno practicing his harness, uh, Lee getting his harness, and you get to practice that. You get to choreograph every move of your uh, your flight, right? So that when you're up there, uh, you can maximize uh, every second of microgravity. Right, you want to take it all in. Um, right now, however, I want to let our audience know I am now hearing that the flight has been uh, decided to terminate the countdown for today based on weather conditions. Out an abundance of caution, we are scrubbing today's flight. And once the turnaround plan is confirmed, we will announce a new launch window. You can follow us on social media for updates. Thank you so much for joining us.